Well, good morning. We've already started with a prayer, yes? Yeah, nice. So welcome to Living Beyond Limits. You all know I'm Reverend Jennifer Spear. I'm so glad you have come to share your morning with us. We are a part of Centers for Spiritual Living. Those of you who are joining us online, welcome to our Sunday service. And so let's begin the service today by reading our mission statement that's on the front of your bulletin. We are a sanctuary where people can discover and reveal the presence of God within their own being and experience their oneness with all life. Through the realization of this inner presence of love and peace, we give way to the evolutionary impulse of the divine and become a beneficial presence in the world. So that's exactly what we are doing here at Living Beyond Limits as we are waking up to our own divine nature, waking up to the fact that that one infinite presence and power not only expresses itself in and through the trees and the plants and the animals that we can see life out there, but that it also expresses within and through and as each and every single one of us. That means if that presence is expressing within you, then it means that what is true of that infinite one is also true of your own divine nature. It is part of the essence of who you are. That means that the love of spirit always indwells you, that the peace of spirit is a part of your nature, that the intelligence and the wisdom and the power all are a part of who you are. What happens as we come to know that then when we move out into the world, we come differently. We bring something different to the world. We bring a greater sense of wholeness and a greater sense of peace. We bring a love to the world, even when it isn't necessarily being given to us, we can bring forward peace. We can bring forward love. And as we do that, we act as a beneficial presence. We transform relationships and conversations and situations in the world. And so I thank every single one of you for answering the call of your own spirit to be walking this path, to be bringing the light of your own spirit into this world in a way that is truly beneficial and that is truly a gift to this world. So thank you for that. So, you know, we all have things going on in our own personal lives and things going on in the world that cause us to experience kind of an ongoing discomfort whether it's things like inequality that are going on, inequality between races or genders or socioeconomic levels in the world, or maybe it's the ongoing discomfort that is caused by the chasm in this country between the left and the right, or maybe it's about <clears throat> some difficulty that you're having in a relationship that's causing you discomfort, something that isn't quite working in that personal relationship. Or maybe it's working at a job that is no longer satisfying to you. Or maybe it's about experiencing dis-ease in your financial life or in your physical body. But whatever that thing is, it causes us to have an ongoing discomfort. It's not like we feel it once and then it's gone and it's over, but it's kind of an ongoing thing. That dissatisfaction... And that discomfort that we feel actually has a purpose. And its purpose is to cause us to make changes in our lives. Its purpose is to make us move from what isn't working for us to move forward into a place where we feel relief, into a place where there is improvement, into a place where we seek and discover solutions and answers and resolutions to whatever it is that isn't working for us. There's an anonymous quote that says, if it doesn't challenge you, it doesn't change you. As human beings, we want to live our lives experiencing a sense of peace and well-being. We also want to live with a sense of integrity, that what it is that we do and say is in alignment with our spiritual principles, with our own personal values, and with who we are and who we see ourselves being. We also want to live a life that is rich and satisfying, a life that is also joyful. 
but sometimes we don't actually make the necessary changes that will enable us to live that life that is peaceful, where we have a sense of well-being and it's joyful and satisfying to us. And sometimes we don't make those changes, those necessary changes, because we're afraid. We're afraid to change. We're afraid of the unknown. We're afraid that possibly we don't have what it takes in order to resolve this thing in our lives. And yet, that nagging discomfort doesn't go away. It's still there. Something's just not right here. That ongoing discomfort is a divine discomfort. And it is on purpose in your life. It is the voice of the infinite one within you. It is the voice of your own I am presence, the I am of your own beingness. It is the voice of that pushing you to change. That discomfort is pushing you to make changes in your life. It's pushing you to grow. It's pushing you to discover more of who you are. And we do that by actually aligning with our spirit. And when we are living in alignment with our spirit, then we automatically make those choices. Sometimes we actually don't make the move in our lives because we don't know what it is that we want. We don't know what our end goal is. We don't know where we want to end up at the very end of it. And so we just kind of stay stuck. But the pain that we have actually pushes us, but it only pushes us so far. Then when we decide and know what it is that we want, when we have a goal, when we have a vision, when we have an idea, then that pulls us the rest of the way toward that thing that it is that we're wanting. Dr. Reverend Michael Beckwith says, you are pushed by pain until you are pulled by a vision. So often that pain initiates our moving. It initiates some change. But then it's that vision, that desired goal, the desired outcome that actually gives us direction of where it is that we're going to head, where it is to lead us. So we experience that discomfort to move and then that vision to experience even more. That vision inspires us and moves us to make positive changes in our lives, to move toward the positive rather than just away from the negative. It helps us, that vision helps us live on purpose, on soul purpose. But the two together, it takes the two together to actually reach that end goal. Makes me think of like a lumberjack, you know, with one of those saws, and you have a person on either end of the saw. You know, if you only had one end and you were only pushing that saw, you'd become exhausted before you ever got to the goal. And if you were on the other end and you only pulled the saw, you'd lose steam before you ever got to your goal. So you need both of those things to move you so that you actually reach the place that you want to end up. But the truth is, life is always about expansion. Life is always about growth. Life is always about self-discovery, discovering the more of who we are. Life is always about actualizing our potential, the untapped potential within us. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, For surely... You know, the plans that I have for you, says the Lord, are plans for your welfare and not for your harm. They are to give you a future with hope. It all is for good. The discomfort as well as the vision, it's all for good. It all leads to a greater good in your life. So there's a story that says, my friends Benny and Sue wanted to lose weight and firm up, firm up their abs. So they bought an exercise machine that they saw advertised on an infomercial. A month after their purchase, I asked them how the machine was working for them. We sent the stupid thing back, Benny scoffed. It didn't do what it promised. How much did you use it, I inquired. 
Oh, maybe five minutes a week, he replied. <laughs> it's easy to blame people and things outside of us for failing to accomplish what only the inside work can beget. I am sure that Benny and Sue would have gotten the desired results if they had used the machine more. The program would have worked if they had worked it. Dee and I built a solar-powered retreat house in a remote location. After the structure was completed, we were away for a long time. Upon our return, we found that the solar power was not working, and I faulted the engineer for not installing the system correctly. When he came out for a service call, he discovered that the batteries were drained because their water supply had been depleted. He refilled the water and explained to me that batteries need to be topped off every couple of months. My criticism of him and the system was for not. Operator error. The universe is set up to work. It is a magnificent system with a miraculous design and infinite potential. But to get the results we seek, we have to practice the operating principles in our favor. If our lives and the world as a whole do not seem to be working, it is not because the system is flawed, it is because of operator error. So we have to listen within to that discomfort and listen within to what it is that our heart and our souls want to experience, what that vision is, that highest vision that we hold, and then we have to act on it. We have to actually do something. So let me give you some examples. So maybe you are pushed by the pain of politics in this country, pushed by the divisiveness that's going on in this country, and maybe that pain makes you think, you know what, I don't want to be like that. And so maybe the pain of that causes you to be a little more open-minded. Maybe that pain causes you to actually be willing to hear what people on the other side are seeing so that you're not a part of that divisiveness. Maybe it causes you to tune into a different radio station or a different TV the channel than you would normally watch. Maybe it causes you to let go a little bit of your judgment so that you're not like that also. Maybe also you are pulled by a vision, a vision of oneness, a vision of unity, a vision of this one human family that we are all a part of. And as you hold that vision, that that's what you want to move to, that's what you want the world to move to, then out of that, maybe you become more open-hearted. Maybe you seek to find middle ground. Maybe you recognize that those opinions aren't all of who we are, that there is something so much bigger going on, that there is a bigger picture than what we see, and it causes you to be inclusive. It causes you to be loving. It causes you to look for middle ground and find your common heart with those people. Or maybe that challenge that you're having is in a personal relationship. And maybe you're being pushed by your discomfort, and that discomfort actually causes you to leave the relationship. But maybe also, if instead you are inspired by a vision, then instead what you do is you bring to the relationship clear and open and honest communication. Maybe what you do is you come to the relationship with less judgment and more unconditional acceptance. Maybe out of that you realize, out of that vision, that you're no longer going to be a doormat that instead you're going to stand in your own wholeness and in your own power and not take personally what the other person is doing or saying because it's not about you. Maybe you've just decided to fill the relationship with light and see what happens then. The vision that we hold is always higher than where our pain will push us to. It always takes us further 
and it's always a higher place to move to. And so at Living Beyond Limits, we have a visioning team, and we do continuing visioning for this center. Some pieces of visioning that continuously come forward, repeated over and over again in our visioning, and there's a team of like six of us that are doing this, is that one of those themes is that we here at Living Beyond Limits are an anchor in stormy times. That we are a place of inclusion and belonging. That we are a place of empowerment. That we are a place of self-discovery. Discovering who we are, that we are more than what it seems. Discovering that there is a bigger picture than what we see when we just look through our human eyes. And that we are an example of what spiritual living looks like. Those are pieces of the vision that we hold. And because we hold that vision, that then informs our decisions, informs what it is that we do here. And also what it does is then when there is pain, I will have to admit, I experience some pain sometimes when there aren't very many people in this room. You know, before COVID, we were twice this size. The pain doesn't overtake me because the vision enables me to see that I am on purpose, that we are on purpose, that we are making a difference. And as long as I know what the purpose is, I can then be on purpose and know that I am in alignment with my spirit. I am in alignment with my soul. And that's what happens when you listen to the vision for whatever it is in your own life. It allows you to live in alignment with your own spiritual nature with your own purpose for being here in life. And so is there something right now that you are focused on in your life that is not working? Some place where you feel like you are staying stuck in that not workingness, whether it's in your own life or even something that's going on in the world? Are you listening within to the voice of spirit to the voice of the I am of your own beingness for direction, for guidance, taking you to what it is that you want to do, to experience what it is that you want to have? Are you letting it be the thing that leads you to the place your spirit wants to be? Is there pain in your life pushing you right now? If there is, grab a hold of that incident. Is there pain somewhere in your life or in this world that is pushing you to create some change? You have a little insert in your paper that has some questions. I think it's pink. You have a pink insert. And do you have a, if, you have a pen, if you don't have a pen, will you raise your hand? And so I invite you to close your eyes. And to turn within to your own divine beingness. The place within you that is the I am of your own being. It is your highest self. It is your soul. It is that which you have come here as. And it is an outpicturing of love itself. It is an outpicturing of the wisdom and the intelligence of the cosmos. It is an outpicturing of wholeness and perfection. And it is the place where you are one with the whole. And so as we rest in that place, we ask that within us. What is the highest vision that is seeking to unfold itself in or through or as this situation? What is the highest vision that is seeking to unfold itself? opening up, listening within, 
to the knowingness of the universe. What is seeking to unfold here? And when you're ready to go ahead and write that down on your paper. What is seeking to be revealed? What is seeking to be known? What is that highest vision of my soul? And when you're done writing, to turn within again and just to rest in that place of your beingness. To rest in that expansiveness of your own spirit. to rest in that place and the oneness of all life. And asking that knower within, in order to bring this vision forward, what is it that I must embrace? Is there something that I must embrace? What must I embrace to allow this to unfold? And then turning within again. Allowing yourself to move just a little bit deeper. To open up just a little bit more. Listening to the voice of the infinite within you and to ask, what must I release in order to experience this? What must be released? What must I let go of?
and turning within one last time. Resting in that all-knowingness. Hear the essence of our own spirit. A knower of the universe. We ask, is there anything else I need to know? Is there anything else I need to know at this time? And so turning within one more time, I just give thanks for this time. I give thanks for this unfolding vision. I give thanks for the courage to step forward, confidence, the light that guides us. Give thanks for this time, knowing that it continues to unfold and reveal itself and lead and guide and direct and compel us into living our best life. And so I invite you to release this and let go. And so we are pushed by pain and we are pulled by a vision to live as our fullest selves to live from our spirit, to bring our grandest beingness to life, to live our grandest life. So my invitation to you this week is to allow that discomfort to come to the surface, allow yourself to feel it, and allow it to push you forward, allow it to be the thing that pushes you and moves you, and then to listen within to what is trying to unfold, to what the bigger picture is, to what your soul is here to do, that bigger life, to listen within to that and allow that be the thing that pulls you and guides you and leads you. Let it help you unfold your own untapped spiritual magnificence and in turn to live your most fulfilling life. And as a result, you'll be living in alignment with your soul's purpose and your soul's potential. So blessings to each and every single one of you on this path of creating your best life and living as your fullest selves. Blessings to you. And so I invite you to join me as we turn our attention to the truth, the capital T truth, recognizing that in truth God is really all there is, that it is that one infinite presence and power whose very essence is love and peace and wholeness and balance and order and goodness. 
It is this one that is, that is expressing itself in and through and as all things. And since that is the truth, that means truly that this infinite one is all there is, that it is omnipresent, not just part of it in places, but all that spirit is is fully present at every point, at the tip of my finger, at the center of my heart, that it fills this room, it fills this world, it fills every single person, every single moment, every single thing with its potential, with its power, with its good and goodness, with its light and its love and its wisdom. And that right now I know that that infinite one is within us and that our spirit, our divine essence is an individualized expression of that one, an individuation of that light and love and wholeness and peace and power. And that it is never and can never be diminished. It can never be dampened. It can never be destroyed. It is always right there in its fullness. And so today we lean into that presence within us, recognizing that it is grander and bigger than anything unlike it, and than anything in this material world. God is bigger than that. And so today we lean in and we are guided and we are led. We are carried and we are buoyed and we are fed and we are nurtured from that within to live our fullest lives, to be our grandest selves. It is spirit having its way by means of us through us and as us. And as we do that, we become a blessing everywhere we go in everything that we do. And so I speak this word not just about us, but about every single person on this planet, that right where they are is the fullness of spirit, expressing itself as a full and rich life, expressing itself as a bounty, unending bounty of good, expressing itself as the culmination, as the meeting of every single need. For there is no lack, there is no delay, there is only the free flow of the all good. And I speak this word also about every single politician, decision maker, world leader, military leader, knowing that that same presence right now expresses within their hearts as love and wisdom. And it is those two things that are guiding the decisions and the actions of each one of them now. For it is the only power that exists. And so as we rest in that truth, I invite you to join me in saying, and so it is. For you as a way to participate. One is we are having our annual meeting today after service. We're having a soup, salad, bread, and dessert potluck. So I invite you to stay after that. What's going to happen is we're going to break down the room right as immediately after service, break down the camera and the sound box and the stage and the altar and stuff, and set up some tables. Um, and then we can eat then, or you can continue to eat while we do the annual meeting. So either one of those. So I invite you all to stay. I hope you do stay for that. Next week, we are not here. We are not here for the next two weeks. They're using this building for voting for the next two weeks. Next week, we are having an outdoor service at El Dorado Nature Center. Um, I think you all know where that is. If you don't, you can look online or you can look on our meetup. I have the address on our meetup that we're going to meet there. So we're going to meet there and have a very short get together and an invocation and some poems and a little talking and stuff. And then we're going to spend like a half an hour forest bathing being in the silence, being in nature, allowing ourselves to be filled up and fed, and then come back together and chat with each other kind of thing. So I invite you to do that. The following week, we won't be here, but we are doing Ronald McDonald House. We are cooking for the people that are staying there who have children in the hospital across the street. There's a sign-up sheet in the back. If you have not signed up and you would still like to, you can, one, sponsor it. Two, you can do grocery shopping. Or three, you can come and cook. Or four, you can just do nothing and stay home in your pajamas. <laughs>
But we invite you to participate in that if you would like to. We'd love to have you. Today's the last day to sign up because we won't be here next week. Or you can do it all. Absolutely. I love that. Pajamas in the morning, cooking in the afternoon. That works. We do. Yeah, sleeping in is good. We, uh, we have prayer support after church. Our practitioners are all happy to pray with you after service if you would like that. Our Sunday talks are available online. They come out Monday evening usually. Then they're on our website as well as our YouTube page. We invite you to help us grow on social media. And I think that's all I have to say, I think. And so I invite you to repeat after me, good fills my life now. Good fills my life now. I step into it. I own it, I, own it. I, celebrate it. I celebrate it, and so it is.